All right, so there's another concept in, uh, in terms of the mole that's going to be very useful for uh, calculations, and that is using Avogadro's number, which is often abbreviated uh, N sub A. Okay? Uh, experiments led by Amadeo Avogadro, an Italian chemist, actually determined how many atoms or molecules are in one mole. So in one mole of any substance, there are... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Uh, that is an enormously large number, which goes to show you how small atoms are. So we know um, previously that the mole started out as a, a collection term for mass. And so one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon and that sample of carbon 12.01 grams has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms this is a collection term and so just like um, a dozen can mean uh, different things a dozen donuts, a dozen eggs, uh, the mole can also be used for other particles, including atoms, electrons, or, of course, molecules. And so we can also say that one mole of water has a mass. It has, uh, we previously uh, calculated, 18.02 grams. And in that sample of water, 18.02 grams, less than, you know, an ounce of water, has an enormous amount of water molecules. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. And so, um, as you can see, these are all equalities, and we previously did calculation converting from grams to moles and moles to grams for different substances. We can also convert between moles and atoms. If we know how many moles of a substance we have, we can figure out how many moles, or excuse me, atoms we have. And so this equality, 1 mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, can be written as two different conversion vectors. One mole of a substance has 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Let's use atoms in this case, atoms. And, or, we could use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per one mole of a substance. Okay, so depending on what you want to do, converting from atoms to moles or moles to atoms, you can use either one of these conversion factors. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple examples and try this out. All right, so our first example um, says that, okay, we've got a sample for 2.50 times 10 to the negative third moles of gold. How many atoms are in this sample? Okay, and so for this, we are going to, of course, need to use Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. And so we're going to use Avogadro's number anytime we want to convert from moles to atoms, or vice versa, atoms to moles. In this scenario, we do want to figure out how many moles or how many atoms are in one mole. And so we're going to write down our first our units that we want, atoms of gold. So gold's elemental symbol is AU. And so I'm going to write down AU atoms, gold atoms. Okay. And our sample contains 2.50 times 10 to the negative third moles of gold. All right, and so we're going to need a conversion factor, and here's our equality, atoms equals moles, 
we could write out the two conversion factors again, or we can just start to build this right on the fly. And so I know I need moles on the bottom. So moles of gold on the bottom. And gold atoms is my final unit. And so that's going to tell me what conversion factor I need. Atoms per mole, which is the same as that is written. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gold atoms per one mole of gold. Moles cancel out. And so I can now calculate this value. All right. So we've got 2.50 times 10 to the negative third times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd equals 1.5055 times 10 to the 21st. Okay, so I've got three significant figures here, four here, so I need to cut this down to three, one, two, so that's going to be 1.51. Times 10 to the 21st gold atoms. All right. So let's try one more problem. It's going to be a little bit more complex, but nothing uh, we can't do. All right. So this um, question asks how many atoms are in a penny, a copper penny. We'll assume it's 100% copper that has a mass of 3.10 grams. In this scenario, we know we're going to want to calculate the number of copper atoms we have in this penny. Uh, but we're starting out with the mass of the penny, 3.10 grams of copper. Here, what we're going to need to do is we can't go directly from grams to atoms. We're going to have to go first to moles. So we're going to have to convert from grams to moles, which we've done before. And then we're going to use Avogadro's number to convert to atoms. So we're going to need two conversion factors in this problem. So what do we need to convert from grams to moles? We need the molar mass, which we can look up on the periodic table. And then, of course, to convert from moles to atoms or vice versa, we're going to need Avogadro's number. Okay. So let's find out copper's uh, molar mass. All right, so here we've got a periodic table. Find copper, 63.55. So it's 63.55 grams per mole. All right, and so of course, to convert from grams to moles, I want to cancel out grams. So I'm going to put that 63.55 on the bottom. Per one mole, one mole, 63.55 grams. Grams cancel, so I did that conversion factor. And then for my next conversion factor, I'm going to convert from moles to atoms, and I'm going to use Avogadro's number. So I know that in one mole, I want moles on the bottom so that they cancel. I've got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. Moles canceled out. I'm left with the units that I want for my final answer. So I know I set this problem up correctly. And so I can just calculate it now. So 3.10 divided by 63.55 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd equals 2.9375, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we need to cut this down, of course. Three, four, four significant figures. So I've got to cut it down to 3, so 2.9, that 3 rounds up to 4, so my final answer is 2.94 times 10 to the 22nd copper atoms. Alright, so just like before, anytime we've got to convert from grams to moles or vice versa, we need the molar mass, which we find on the periodic table. If this was a molecule, we were forming or uh, on a compound, we would just calculate the molar mass, then convert grams to moles. And now we can calculate how many atoms or molecules are in that using Avogadro's number.